And as we do every Friday, we take a look at the Southern African markets. Well, this week, we'll be looking at taking a look at some of the factors that have an impact on what investor, investors would like to see and uh, what kind of role they will play in terms of investment on the continent, particularly in Sub-Saharan Africa and Southern Africa. So we'll start off by looking at those investment flows and some of the factors behind that. Also, we'll look at those risk factors that are associated with uh, investment flows and finally, what we've seen on the South African front just, uh, what, 48 hours ago, uh, the importance of policy certainty and policy continuity, uh, policy reforms that we'll be looking at in, in that particular segment there. But to help me do this and give us expert analysis, I'm joined by Langa Madonko. He's an investment principal at Africa Strategic Impact Fund. Langa, thank you so much for making the time to join us. Uh, there's been a negative sentiment towards emerging markets. And of course, if we look at the, you know, the likes of South Africa being a part of an emerging market economy, uh, but look at Southern Africa as a whole, mm. how do we measure up? Are we still going to be able uh, to attract these funds into this particular part of the world? Um, I think, uh, thank you very much for having me. Uh, I think uh, the first point of departure should be to say, yes, there is a negative sentiment around um, uh, the emerging markets in general and but relating to southern Africa um, I think everybody is aware of the opportunity that continues to exist but uh, you have to weigh the opportunity versus the risk that uh, is is perceived by the markets in terms of their investments into the region mm -hmm. and I think uh, you continue to have some countries like Mozambique and uh, Angola being bright spots in terms of the investment profile and where lots of people are deploying their capital of late and people start to ask questions around some of the other economies that are in the region and they start to ask questions around um, like you said policy they also start to ask questions around issues like uh, the risk factors That's right. yeah, that are associated with the region. We'll delve into those uh, other two points in just a moment, but if we uh, take a look at investment flows, um, again, where money is flowing to, the argument of uh, developed markets versus African markets is still very, very big. Uh, in future, in the next year, to so, uh, next year or so, if you look at the outlook for this particular part of the continent, is it overhyped when people start talking about the likes of the rising middle class, for example? I mean, do you really see an investment case there? Um, I think having been to all the southern countries, I think the story is true. But the question is always going to be around how do you harness that opportunity? Mm. And the opportunity in Africa is, of course, around uh, capital projects, infrastructure, things that will take a little bit longer to yield the type of returns that they're looking for. But uh, the other challenge that everybody is looking at now is you are facing a situation where you are dollar in and then the local market is on a quarter basis and then how do you hedge against the currency risk and all those factors mm. that go into that. And I think um, if Africa can start to address some of those stories, in particular SADC, start to find ways in which it can leverage um, its great potential in terms of the sectors where there is greater opportunities, then we will continue to see inflows. And I mean the inflows of uh, investment continue to grow. Yes. Um, not as rapidly as we would like, uh, considering how much investment we require in order to reach uh, the milestones that we're looking for. You mentioned currency factors, and of course that brings us to the second point of the risk factors yes. uh, that we need to take into account. So next week, when we're all on holiday in South Africa on the 16th of December, uh, Janet Yellen and her team will be telling us about that interest rate decision. How big of a risk is this to Southern African markets? Um, it's a quite a big risk because uh, you've noticed, particularly on the African continent in general and specifically in SADC, we have now gone into dollar-based bonds and they are, they are always on a floating interest rate and now if the interest rate goes up in the US then there's pressure on us as well. The debt that we have incurred becomes a whole lot more expensive and with the fluctuation particularly relating to the currencies which are feeling the pressure of a stronger dollar, yeah. uh, we are really um, hoping that the rise is not as significant as people are saying it will be. Policy reforms and policy certainty, certainly the big example has been uh, the change in leadership. Uh, who's steering the ship when it comes to the finance portfolio here in South Africa. And I think policy certainty is what a lot of leaders and investment uh, people have been saying they are definitely calling from uh, for. How important are policy reforms and where can we draw examples from that, you know, that the rest of the Southern African continent can, can start to implement? I think uh, Southern Africa is one of the places where 
the issue of policy reform as well as who is in the political leadership is a, is a big story. Um, and I think it has a very great impact because you start to think, for example, in the South African context, you start to think of the story from Trevor Manuel to Pavan Gordon to Ntlantla Nene and now to the new minister. And you're trying to look for consistency because mm -hmm. you want to be able to deploy long-term capital in the region and you want to be also able to anticipate where things might be going. And with um, some of the decisions and, and actions that take place, particularly in our sub-region, then we face... Uh, challenges in that department and then your measuring of risk and country risk starts to uh, get a little bit more tricky because uh, even the things that you thought would have been a little bit more stable then uh, are not as stable as you thought. And I think a comparable uh, economy would be East Africa, the East Africa community. They are starting to take measures and steps that are integrating the com uh, their community mm -hmm. where they are looking for one visa, one passport in the region. They are trying to also integrate the the financial systems and try to come to a point where they are also integrating the transport and infrastructure base that they are using there. And I think SADAC has a bigger population, so it is a bigger market and it has a bigger investment opportunity uh, when consolidated. But our policy reform in terms of integration as well as trade amongst ourselves, um, as well as that policy certainty that we're looking for, mm. is um, slower than what it should be. Langa, thank you so much for coming in and giving us uh, you know, a bit of insight uh, with regards to investment decisions and what investors look for in terms of measuring risk in Southern Africa. Uh, of course, uh, we were now joined by Langa Madongo. He's an investment principal at the Africa Strategic Impact Fund.